What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In my last video, you seen that we got the cylinder heads for Project Mixed Up Boss finished up over at DV's house. So today is the day that I've been waiting on for a long, long time. I know that I've said that in other videos in the past, but today we're gonna take this table full of parts and put it in this short block and make it a completed long block. So stay tuned if you want to see how you get a Boss 429 out of a 429 Windsor. The first order of business I want to talk about is this lifter valley plate that is unique to the Hammerhead Performance Engines combination. As you can see, it's a two-piece deal here so that you can still access the Lifter Valley and do necessary maintenance. Now, this design right here is the reason why ultimately I chose to go with a dry intake manifold. Because if for some reason down the road I'm having trouble with a lifter, I can just yank the manifold off in a short amount of time, access it through this plate without having to take you know the rest of the deal apart so <clears throat> first order of business we got to get our solid roller lifters in the bores get them oiled up and then i'm going to show you how that plate attaches to the block well as you can see i've got all of the roller lifters installed and just a quick note you know i actually soaked these in uh, motor oil before i installed them some people may disagree with this, but even though these are solid roller lifters, I want to make sure that the needles on the rollers have every bit of oil that they possibly can get before we actually fire this thing up. Now, I know that when I prime the engine, it's going to force feed oil onto the roller itself, but for me, it's just a peace of mind thing. So you can take that as a grain of salt. Next order of business is talking about this valley plate right here. Now this thing is pretty cool. I have talked to Greg about this in good detail about the best way to attach it. And some people may think this is kind of shady, but it works. You, while you can actually drill and tap the china rails and do a countersunk bolt to attach it, it's really not necessary. This thing just needs to be uh, glued to the china rails via some right stuff silicone rtv whatever your poison of choice is i use right stuff i've had really good luck with it but what we're going to do is glue this down and when the head actually goes on it's going to lock it in place and there's some places up here that we will have to put rtv as well and i'll show you that in detail because getting it sealed up properly is going to be critical to making sure that we don't have any kind of oil leaks. All right, so we're going to start laying our RTV down, our right stuff, so that we can get this plate on there. So next, you notice first, that there's not a huge bead there. One of the common mistakes I see people make is putting a gob of uh, silicone on the china wall and all that does is make a mess. Make sure that it's on there, press it down. Then once you get to that point, it's just a matter of peeling it off. You may have a little bit of cleanup to do, but for the most part, you've got a perfect line there. Now that the plate is actually sealed onto the 
deck of the block or the china wall what we're going to do is I'm going to show you that we need to add sealant here and up across this ledge here so that we can actually seal off the lifter valley to the head you know this may seem like a big deal but it's really not it'll actually seal up good and tight and it will actually lock the valley plate underneath the head preventing any leaks one thing you might notice that i'm doing a little different is i don't like to put my head studs in the block and then slide the head over it keeps it from dragging aluminum shavings up onto the thread possibly throwing off your uh, torque reading make sure that's seated down properly all right so now i can start putting my head studs in the kit comes with four short studs and the rest are long the short studs go into the bottom corners on the bottom side of the head okay so if you get the hammerhead performance kit just know that the four short ones two on each side go into the bottom side of the head okay so now i've got the head studs in with the nuts on i can start torquing i'm going to go in three steps starting at 30 and then i'm going to end up at 100 foot pounds As you can see, I've got both heads bolted on here. Um, you can see how good of a clean line that makes using tape to uh, put your bead of silicone on the valley plate. So next up is getting the valve train bolted on the rocker stands and the rockers, push rods. So one of the things that I want to touch on about why I like these heads is the fact that the rocker stands are a one-piece deal you've got one stand independent from the intake to the exhaust and each stand is held on by 12 bolts two 3 8 and a 7 16 bolt at each location of a rocker so that makes for a really rigid rocker setup now with the boss style head being a hemi you're going to have the long exhaust rocker and there's nothing that you can really do to get around that but like i said before greg brown has ran this set up up to close to 10,000 rpms without any issues so let's get started putting this together Okay, so I've got the rocker stands bolted on and torqued down, uh, torqued the 7 16 bolts down to 50 foot pounds, the 3 8 down to uh, 26 foot pounds. We're getting ready to start putting rocker arms on. One thing I want to talk about is, let me get a clean one. You can notice here on the end of this push rod that it's got a 210 degree tip. It's got a ball in, but it has a recess, and that is for shaft rockers. That is very important. One thing I always do when I get new push rods is I always blow them out, make sure that there's no kind of debris inside the tube itself, and then use the extreme pressure lube on both ends, on the uh, lifter face, and where it contacts the rocker itself that'll go a long way for longevity so let's put some rocker arms on this thing
Well, here it is. It is the completed long block with exception of the intake and the front accessories and the balancer. Uh, I've got the rocker assemblies on. Got them set at uh, 15 thousandths cold lash. So it will probably open up at about 22 thousandths when it's hot. We'll verify that again when the time comes and when it's running. So, you probably will not see this thing again until it is actually completed and we're taking it to the dyno. We've got a lot of work to do. So, I appreciate you following along on Project Mixed Up Boss. And until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I'll catch you later. Yeah.